All right, so if you're gonna spend any time in Texas, you're gonna find out real quick, there are a few things we hold very dear in this state. Among them are the Alamo, family, and barbecue. Mmm, yeah. barbecue. <laughs> see, see what I mean? And this little trip we're going on today is all about that third one, that sweet smoky meat. Of course, we're gonna mix in a few other things as sides to the main course. It's gonna be a good one. I hope you brought your stretchy pants. Sound. Taylor! You gotta give me more notice This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Taylor is right here, within the Blackland Prairie region of Texas, about 30 minutes northeast of Austin and a full two hours from San Antonio. But perhaps more important is that it's part of the Texas barbecue belt. So breathe it in deep and get ready to eat. I mean, this is definitely not a big city by modern standards, but you look around all these old buildings and you can tell that at one point it was a happening place. You can feel a soul downtown in all the buildings. You can also smell that soul rising up from some of the most storied barbecue joints in Texas, such as the great, legendary, even mythic Louis Mueller Barbecue. This place reeks of Texas barbecue tradition, and anyone who steps inside will reek of barbecue themselves. I still remember the very first time I set foot in Louie's. It was like stepping into a holy cathedral of meat. And truthfully, nothing has changed since. This is why I love Louis Mueller so much. Old jukebox, probably doesn't work. These things have been smoked to oblivion. That one's a new one, that is not a new one. And then how cool is this? You recognize that guy? Stevie Ray Vaughan, album cover shoot, right here. This is Wayne Mueller, current keeper of the Family Flame. Welcome you, back. Man. Every chance I get to come back here, man, I jump on it. Would you mind showing me what goes on in the back back oh, here? Yeah. All man. right, let's, let's go back and see. Just watch your step. This is what it's been for the last 55 years. I was indoctrinated from my earliest childhood, from the time I was about eight years old, because that's oh, yeah. when I started working here. Okay. Um, when my father took over from his grandfather. How much has this part changed, this rub? None. It's nine parts pepper, one part salt. salt. But if you'll look behind us, this, yeah. this is where we cook all of our dense red meat. Right now we've got briskets already on for tomorrow. Yep. This chamber is reserved for these beef ribs. It's a little gotcha. bit hotter. The bones really act as a radiant shield, help to cook from the bottom and the top, and then do this, you know, pulsating shift with brisket to kind of move it around so it doesn't get overly. You're using words like radiant shield, pulsating shift? Well, we could, we could, we could talk aer aerodynamics, fluid dynamics, and thermodynamics if you'd like. I'm learning more in like a two minute conversation than I've learned in eight years of making a show. How much do you charge for your master's class? Um, I haven't, you know, I'm still working on the curriculum, but. <laughs> and so it hasn't changed much at all. A beef rub that's nothing but black pepper and salt, a pit that's been smoking for over 50 years, and meat that's nothing but delicious. This is our serving pit, it's our holding pit. Yeah, there's Look a little. There's a little bit of patina on there. Yeah. I wanna lick it real fast. Just see if it yeah it's pretty good it's tasty well I this is kind of nutty right now why don't why don't I put it together a few samples for you how about I put it together a little beef a little pork yeah a little beef pork. and a little pork a little bit yeah do you do anything little here though really no not really but yeah, what's this bad boy this is a finished brisket yeah. squeeze that a little bit for us Wayne look at oh yeah gratuitous oh, Chad gratuitous I love it. I love it. I'm not gonna be able to wait I just oh, I, I, I can't wait this is my happy place right here. Well, you want to sit down and snack a yeah, little bit? Yeah, let's go. I got this. Under Wayne's guidance, this place hasn't skipped the barbecue beat. After all, it's in his blood. And I bet Louie didn't know that he would become the patriarch of the meatiest family tree in Texas. Because after Louie came his son Bobby, who truly put this place on the map, and who begat three children, all running highly respected Texas barbecue joints, and who have trained countless other pit bosses whose smoke now swirls across the globe. You're carrying this precious thing that means so much to so many people. What, what's that feel like? It's an honor, first of all, that my father would ask me to continue this legacy, right? I look at my father as being mythical at this point. I mean, he's, you know, he's one of the titans. 
How do you follow Vince Lombardi? Not, yeah. My job is not to screw it up, right? <laughs> this to me is Texas. Family. Community. Just Texas. Love. Uh, sharing. I think all of those things are incorporated into what barbecue yeah. is because it's the way people have been eating and sharing forever and ever and ever. Hey, well, thank you, man. Maybe not handshake, but right there. Right on, brother. And in that same communal spirit, I'm getting cue for the crew as we take part in the time-honored tradition of Texas barbecue. The legend of Louis casts one heck of a shadow over this town, and frankly, it would be tough, if not impossible, for any other joint to compete. But luckily, the place we're headed isn't just any other joint, but one completely happy living in the shadows, because it's under the overpass. Time for second lunch at Taylor Cafe, or as the locals know it, Vinsel's. All because of this man, owner Vinsel Mayers, a World War II vet who at 92 years old still comes to work every day. How long have you been in the barbecue business? Since 1904, about 65 years. Wow. Since 1948. You've been running this place since 48? Yes, sir. For over 60 years, Vinsel's has offered a no frills proposition. Low prices, cold beer, excellent barbecue. But none of those are his true secret to success. You got to know the people. You got to take care of the people. Give them good food, sanitation, make them come welcome back. Vinsel served at the invasion of Normandy, the Battle of the Bulge, and has spent almost every day since serving this community. We owe, we owe so much to, to you and your generation, so thank you. Today, this humble hero relies upon his team of barbecue bosses, Jim and Scott. So how much of this uh, did Vinsel set and you guys just don't mess with? Well, Vinsel passed it on and I passed it on and I mean, it's just a few of us know it. And I don't want to say too much because we got competition across the street over there. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I heard. <laughs> they cook them fast and then let them cool and soften overnight in these coolers. And that's a little touch I ain't seen anywhere else. So, Jim, you get the feeling that this has felt the, this way for 40, 50 years. It's been this way a lot longer. I understand that there, there were different doors during different periods well, of time. Way back when, it was segregated. It had the blacks on one side and everyone else on the other side. Two jukeboxes, one on each side, had cigarette machines on each side. Wow. And uh, these bars, they, they went all the way. And it stayed that way even after desegregation. There's still people who sit on the right side, or, or not the right side, their side. There's people who still come in. They sit over here. That's that's their that's their spot. So just creatures of habit. Creatures of habit. One side or the other, huh? Everybody's welcome everywhere, but that's just what they do. Uh -huh. I've invited my buddy Josh to join me. He grew up in Taylor, and like any hometown boy, knows Vinsels well. I love it. Look at this. I mean, no frills. It's just it's styrofoam plates. Fine it's China. Just, yeah. yeah. This turkey sausage is great. That's solid brisket too, man. This <laughs> pork rib is legitimate. Wow. You're trying to eat it with a fork and knife, I man. Know, what man. are you I'm doing? On, I'm on a fancy TV show. <laughs> if you ever actually seen our TV show, you'd know that we're not that fancy, man. I do get the feeling that this is the locals' barbecue. There's a, there's more of a sense of down home Taylor. Absolutely. I mean, you know. You go into Louis on a given Saturday, I won't know anyone in the building. No. And you come here and I can go around the bar right now and tell you not only who these folks are, but who their grandparents are. And uh, whether you went to high school with any of the kids. Yeah, absolutely. How do you describe Taylor as a town to folks? I don't know. I don't want to overstate it, but it's kind of a microcosm of race relations in the South. When I was growing up, it was very much still a segregated community, not necessarily by by law, by law, but just certain folks grew up on this side of the track, certain folks grew up on that side of the tracks, and it was a fairly firm line. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a, a very literal tracks. Absolutely. You know? But dealing with the race issue in the way that it has has been, you know, one of the, the achievements of this community. Vinsel's epitomizes the fact that Texas barbecue is about much more than just food on plates. Barbecue is a meeting ground for people of all colors, classes, and religions. And as long as Vinsel is around, and hopefully for a lot longer, all of them will be welcome in his dining room. Oh. We now interrupt this programming to remind you to like and subscribe. Now back to the road. Man, what do y'all say we skip the third lunch and go do something a little bit different? Uh, there's a little museum to probably the most important governor in Texas history that you might have never heard about. Man by the name of 
Dan, Dan Moody. Moody. Sorry. <laughs> this is the Moody Museum, which was once the childhood home of Governor Dan Moody, who in 1927, at the age of only 33, became the youngest governor in Texas history. We're getting a private tour from Susan Komandowski, director of the Friends of Dan Moody. One of the things that makes our museum authentic is the furnishings are original to the family. This museum is like a time capsule, full of items dating well into the 1800s, when this home was built and the Moody's moved to Taylor. This room contains our oldest pieces. The dress you're looking at was the governor's mother's wedding dress in 1890. Wow. And his father's top coat and hat. <laughs> Downstairs is the story of Dan's family and childhood, but upstairs you get the story of Dan's career. The Taylor boy whose most famous days came in the 1920s when he was brave enough to stand up to the Ku Klux Klan. It doesn't get much more sobering than this right here. In the 1920s, the KKK had hundreds of thousands of members across Texas, and Taylor was no exception. Dan despised the group for their abuse of corrupt power. And after they committed a local hate crime, Dan managed to convict and send members of the KKK to prison for the first time in U.S. history. It shocked the country. He, he became essentially a, a early celebrity for what he had done. Now, there's people climbing trees to see Dan sworn into office as the governor. Dan will always be remembered for fearlessly standing up for what's right, even in the face of towering evil. But Dan's not the only famous citizen from Taylor. There was also Dr. Dickey in the 1950s. Pro wrestlers, pro rodeo entertainers, and then... Tex Avery. Creator of many famous cartoon characters. Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Elmer Fudd, Daffy Duck. Come on, that's huge. Do you realize that's like Walt Disney being born in Taylor, but on the Warner Brothers side of things. Legend has that he used to say, what's up, Doc, to all his friends, and well, of course, that's Bugs Bunny's tagline. I love the stories of the passionate and creative Texans who have come before me, but this story of Tex Avery has me thinking, you know? One day, he just went into his brain and out popped Bugs Bunny. I think I could come up with something like that. Let's go. Oh, guys, 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 look, I created my own character. What is that? What's it's, that? It's a jackalo. It's a, it's a first draft. Dude, it's, he's got a little. Well, it seems my art hasn't yet caught up to my brain. So until then, better keep tripping. Now, there are some real animals that folks like to hang out with here, especially at Murphy Park. This is one of the benefits of eating barbecue in Taylor. You have leftover white bread. Come to your father who provides bread. Sit. OK, look up. Ah, and roll over, roll over. All right, look at me like a goose. <laughs> look at me like, ow! <laughs> we had skin contact on that one. Here you go, Richie, need some bread? <laughs> need some bread? <laughs> <laughs> look at these little baby geese. Are they goslings or ducklings? Richie, what do you think? Uh, I'm gonna go with small birds. Whoa, oh, okay. <laughs> did you see that guy? <laughs> but the afternoon sun is hot, and this lake doesn't really strike me as a Taylor-style watering hole. I got another idea for that. So uh, we're back on the streets of downtown Taylor, although this time we did not come for barbecue, but something that's uh, more refreshing. The Texas Beer Company. Opened all the way back in 2016, this brewery is still young, but has already become a local favorite. This place is packed. Whoa! Who's this guy? He's even here. And a packed tap room is a beautiful sight to co-founder and brewmaster, JD. Listen, it's a hot afternoon. I need a cold beer. Yeah, well, we have a few beers that we brew on site. You want some of that? That's what I want. I want y'all's thing. A mosaic IPA and a chocolate stout with mosaic hops as well. So. I'd love to try them both if that's possible. Uh, got two claps right here. There you go. <laughs> and like the shirt says, this is tailor-made. So this is the IPA and this is the stout. Ooh, really good, man. Yeah. Really good. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, uh, Taylor, Texas has, has taken the craft beer. I mean, look yeah. at this place. Yeah, well, when we were setting up shop here, we weren't sure exactly what to expect. 
but right away it became evident that people like beer and people <laughs> like good beer. As long as it's cold and people are happy. And that's great. I, I was gonna pick which one I like best and take that one. I'm gonna take them both. All right. <laughs> Cheers to me. Cheers. <laughs> It's not just the beer making folks happy around here, but the fact that there is now life on a downtown corner where things were once dead. This is co-founder Ian, the other half of this beer brainchild. We, we just can't believe all the good fortune we've had. It started off with just an idea between a couple guys and you know, if you drink enough of your own brew, you start really believing you can scale up. <laughs> so after a Kickstarter campaign and years of waiting, the Texas Beer Company is finally hopping. What we're trying to do is essentially just make this a community space. Yeah. And it's just been an amazing response. You know, you have young people, you know, hipsters who like their craft beer and their extra hops and their stouts. And then you have a lot of older folks who remember when Main Street was vibrant. They remember when yeah. Taylor was really hopping and it's bringing back those kind of memories. We want everybody to think of this as their Texas beer company. Because if you love Texas and if you love beer, then we love you. We so, get behind that. Absolutely. <laughs> And so they're doing their small part at revitalizing Taylor, one pint at a time. You know, I think it's finally time to leave the city completely and get outside for a little bit. You know, if you look around Taylor, you're not gonna see much uh, outdoor activity other than growing corn. But if you head just a little bit north, which is where we're going right now, you can find a lake that has the best crappie fishing in the entire state of Texas. You say crappie? It's true. It is not the, the, the semi-potty word. It is a type of fish, <laughs> all right? That's C-R-A-P-P-I-E. I'm gonna, draw, like that? That. I'm gonna draw that on the screen. Good, good, because my backwards <laughs> handwriting was actually excellent. That was very good, that was very good. So away we go, through the corn to Granger Lake. Step one is to meet up with local guide, Tommy Tidwell. It looks like a beautiful day to fish. You think they'll be biting? Oh yeah, they'll be biting. All right, let's go. <laughs> so what is a crappie? Well, it's a small freshwater fish. They're bigger than a perch, but not as big as a bass. They're plentiful, fun to catch, delicious, and Tommy knows where they hang out. Uh, if you can just imagine, I've got literally hundreds, and as far as you can see in any direction, I can go straight over there and catch a crappie. That's because underneath these waters is a network of trees, both real and fake plastic ones. The crappie love them, and they also seem to love Tommy's hook. When you feel a bite on that minnow, you start raising real slow. <laughs> on crappie, you always need a dip net. To there we go. Dip them up. And, uh, well, here we go, our first, our first one. Here's how you tell if they're a keeper or not. You slide okay. him right in here. The tail sticks over the end, he's a keeper. See that? Ten, yep. and, ten and a half inches. And so not bad. He's good, we'll go in the cooler with him. Bam! All right, now time to catch my own 10 incher. Okay, come on up, raise up, get him. Oh, there, there we go. go. And I can usually tell you when you got a fish way Oh, before, here she comes. Before you know you'll <laughs> got one. Or maybe just two incher. This is it. If this is the only fish I catch today, this is the last fishing segment we're doing ever on the Day Tripper. <laughs> He's gonna have to get bigger, but luckily, the fish keep biting. You got oh. one on it. <laughs> get him yeah. in too. We in the action now, boys. Oh, this guy's good. Oh, That's this a is... good one? Yeah, well, I think. <laughs> nope, he's not quite. Oh, not quite. <sighs> but unluckily, they're not really the big ones. Yeah, normally in crappie fishing, if you don't catch a fish in five minutes, you move on, so uh, let's reel them up. Let's do it. Head to a new spot here. It looks to me like just fish everywhere I here. I feel it. <laughs> I really feel this spot connecting to the fish. You look at all this water, I mean, this is clearly the most beautiful spot to be. This is it, this is where you hang out. Clearly, I don't know much about crappie spots. <laughs> I'm amazed that this guy actually knows where these fish are. It's like he can see underwater because it all looks the same to me. Well, this spot's proven to be good for one of us, as Tommy's over there filling up the cooler. Really? There she is. That's a good size one there, Tommy. Not, I haven't been putting bait on mine. Oh, <laughs> just rub it in, Tommy. Just rub it in. I'm not even baiting my hook. I'm catching all these keepers. And I'm still coming up tiny. <laughs> I'm catching the whoppers out here. Little crapito. Let's see what you got. Oh, that's a throwback. Man. We'll catch you next year, all right? OK. Bye con Dios, amigo. Come on. Moby, wait, Moby crappie? Oh. Crappie dick is out there somewhere. Even for a whopper crappie, they are still pretty small. The state record is right at four pounds. But I don't think I'm doing myself any favors. I smell like a big beef cow. They're probably scared away because I smell like barbecue. But stink or not, finally finding some action. You got a good one there, it looks like. Oh yeah, oh yeah, okay, there, there, there she is. There's, There's a, nice a keeper. There. We got a keeper. Yeah. 
You know, this may not be the most exciting fishing to some, but crappie fishing is mighty relaxing and a super way for kids of all ages to throw some hooks and actually catch some fish. And we managed to catch a whole cooler's worth. This is by far the best day fishing I've ever had, and we were only out there like maybe yeah, a couple yeah. hours. We're definitely keeping these to eat them, but without a fish fryer on hand at the moment, I got something else in mind. Pop quiz, guess what we're having for dinner? Um, pierogies. <laughs> Wrong! It's barbecue! Oh, Woo! Yay. But a little something different. Oh, okay. Because this is Taylor's barbecue joint that you've probably never heard of. Davis Grocery Store and Barbecue. All right, but I gotta warn you guys because we're not just going to another barbecue joint, we're also going to church. Step inside and you'll notice this really is a grocery store with everything you need to cook your own meals. But why would you bother with Reverend James Davis running the pits? I'm ashamed to say that I've been through Taylor, I don't know, a hundred times and didn't know about you guys till just recently. I've been missing all this good food all this time. I, I feel ashamed. I just feel ashamed. And while this building may be easy to overlook, you can't miss the good Reverend's talents for sharing his faith and his food, along with serving dinner and the community. And my good friends, his meat preaches a sermon all its own. We have pork steaks, brisket, sausage, ribs, mutton, really? chicken, just about anything you want. Man, that's awesome. You know, why pick one? Just do them all. Yeah. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Davis, that's good. Great flavor, great smoke. And after 23 years, I think we do a pretty good job of doing it. Oh, I would say so. Oh, after after two to three bites, I know you guys <laughs> do a good job of it. Well, don't sell it too hard, Chet, because we're all hungry. The crew, the crew <laughs> it's dinner for the crew, and you know, we might just kick you out. <laughs> after I've enjoyed pretty much this whole thing, I may leave y'all some. So, where do you do all this this cooking? Right out back, we have two pits out there. Oh, I would say it's a uh, movable pit, but that's pretty stationary. <laughs> Here we go. More pork ribs. These are the briskets. We're pulling right out of the pit. Tastes just like candy, meat candy. Mm. Occasionally, I will order chicken at a barbecue place, but never the pork steak because, well, it's never offered. But here at Davis Grocery, it's a must, especially when topped with a little comeback juice. This is a sauce that we make here in-house. I like it already. Let me, give, let me give it a shot. It has a sweet base. It's very good. Oh, dang. That really is. <laughs> now, how'd you, how'd you get into this? Well, it came as a vision from God many years ago. This is my ministry. I, I can minister to more people here than I ever could on a Sunday morning. Here, I can feed them physically, like I'm feeding you, and I can feed them spiritually, if so be it. Wow. I love it. Tonight, I'll be preaching at First Baptist Church here down the street, 7 o'clock, so it don't take too long. Yeah. <laughs> be bad if the preacher was Preaching late, right? Late. I don't That'd be a bad deal. <laughs> well, before I dig in, I need a bless of food. You mind? All right. Thank you, Lord, for the blessing of a meaty and magnificent day. Thank you for the friendly folks at Taylor and the joys of exploring it. Thank you for barbecue and for your provision. Lord, bless the pit bosses and the workers who show up day in and day out to provide us with more than just food, but places together and to share in the great tradition of community. In your son's name, amen. Amen. All right. I need some more of that, this comeback sauce right, right there. Take oh, all yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, I will see all y'all out on the road. Bye, con Dios, amigos. Rusty and we left one of our cameras. Who are we blaming for this one? I think you blame the producer. <laughs> Definitely. Get the gear, man. Richard, the axe has to fall somewhere. And I brought my camera. Richard, I brought I brought my camera. Hey, I, I brought this. This is not gonna be So there are a few things that we hold very dear here in Texas. I mean, on the list are things like things, other things next to things on the list of, Wait, of thing? on the list of things. Thing? There's a list of things full of things among the things. <laughs> oh yeah, thank you. Now get in the van. Where's my driver? What? Where's my Perrier? He's not Bring that it. famous. <laughs> move, 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 come on. Right, right. Fun was season one and it's over. <laughs> it's season eight now. We make a show, a professional show. Get in the car. I want to talk about my professional wage. <laughs> Did someone just go diva on us? I think so. Hey, yeah. I was diva
Howdy, y'all. Follow along with my adventures at Chet Tripper on Instagram and at the Day Tripper TV on Facebook and YouTube. Or head to thedaytripper.com for travel guides, past episodes, and info on our mobile app and Team Day Tripper. This episode was made for y'all with the help of our awesome partners. Check the caption for more info. Howdy, y'all. Chet the Day Tripper here. Thanks so much for tripping with us. Uh, remember, while you're here, like this video, subscribe to our channel so that we can stay out there on the road and keep on tripping. <laughs> Did we miss anything in this town? Leave us a comment. Let us know. We love finding out about new stops with all your tips. And if you love Epic Texas Day Trips, remember to check our channel. We got a lot of them on there. Also, don't forget, if you want some sweet Day Tripper merch or another cool Texas-made product, Come see us in Georgetown at the Day Tripper World Headquarters. You can also shop online if you check the link down there in the caption. All right, y'all. Bye, con Dios, amigas.